We have been in a series titled Those Loving God. And we are on part four, I believe, Those Loving God. And we have been looking, uh, our main text we've been looking at is a very, very famous verse, a, a verse you will often hear quoted, a verse you will see on social media very often, and, uh, but often misrepresented. And that famous verse is Romans 8.28. And we're going to start here right in the Young's Literal translation, because I think, I think this is a better translation. Uh, as we know, the Young's Literal is literal. <laughs> so it's word for word. It doesn't add. It doesn't subtract, as many translations do. They add words. They subtract words based on what they think it says. At least in the Young's Literal, sometimes it doesn't make perfect sense, but we know what the Greek says, word for word in our English language and we can get a, maybe, maybe get a better understanding. So if you don't, when you, during your Bible study, right, nowadays it's easy. You don't have to have a Bible with 20 translations in it as we used to have to have, right? And, and, and find it and then look over here and then look over there and then look over there. And, and just to find, now you can Google, uh, well, I like Bible Gateway because you can, you put in a verse. If you put Romans 8, 28 into Bible Gateway, then you can hit all English translations, boom. And now you got 40 translations of that verse sitting on your screen, probably more than that. And now you look through those and you start to say, oh, wait a second, wait a second. That's not at all what I, wait a second. Now you're looking at all these translations. Now you take it a step further. See, I'm giving you some tools here. Now you take it a step further. You go to the blue letter Bible, which is you can look up the Greek and the Hebrew and you put in that verse into the Blue Letter Bible on, online, online, right? And you go right to that verse, and now it's, it's all the Greek words, and, and you click on that word, now you have a definition of that word. See what I'm saying? You, if you want to study the word, you can, really easy nowadays. <laughs> when I was saved in the 91, right? I got saved in 91. Boy, I tell you. There were classes on just how to study the Bible. It's like, well, you got to get this book and you got to get that book. And of course, you got to have a strong concordance, right? Come on, who's strong concordance? You got to have a strong concordance or you're not even, you're not even, you haven't even started studying the Bible. If you don't have a strong concordance in your library, right? You, you're not even serious without that. And that, that, you know, now you can do it all online. It's all right there. And Blue Letter Bible will give you the strong concordance definitions along with the, uh, Several other commentaries and also different, uh, I'm trying to think of that word, but other tools to use, other books that we used to have to pull off the shelf. Now they're right there online. So now, now that you, we have a little, uh, we have a little uh, uh, teaching session there about how to study the Bible. In the Young's Literal 828 Romans, we have known that to those loving God, all things do work together for good to those who are called according to purpose. Come on, the purposes of God. You're called. Are you called yeah. to God's purpose? Yeah. <clears throat> you see, the problem with this verse is, is many people have applied this verse to everyone and they tell people it's all going to work out for good. That's not what it says. <laughs> That's not what it says. <laughs> it's all just going to work out for you. It's, God's going to work it out for you. It's all going to turn around for you. Well, well, it, it applies to those loving God. It doesn't even apply to those who have a strong liking for God. <laughs> I, 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 I like God. I like God a lot, but I don't know about love. Come on. Love is an action. Loving, that's why I like this translation. I like the participle, loving. We talked about that last week. I like the participle of loving God because we got action there. Loving is a verb, come on. And this verse works for those who are actively loving God. Amen. As we said, I think it was last week, uh, uh, the fact that God loves us is not in, in, in question. We can, we can go through Bible verse after Bible verse about God loving us. Of course, we would go to John 3, 16 immediately, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We, 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 we go, and that is preached 
from, from probably, <laughs> I can't say every, but probably <laughs> every pulpit in America and, and, and even maybe the world, right? A Christian church. John 3, 16, God loves us. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You know, we have sweatshirts. Uh, uh, the kids have several Jesus loves you shirts. They've been wearing a lot. I think that's good. But Sarah said, we also need one that says, I love Jesus. Because the question is not, does God love us? The question is, do we actually love God? Actively love him. That, that's the question. And, and millions of people, as, as you probably know, hate God. And they can easily be found. You can find haters of God easily. <laughs> Anybody run into a few? <laughs> whoo, whoo, whoo. There are plenteous. It's easy to find a hater of God. That's easy. You know what the hard part is? Finding a real lover of God. That is hard to do. I, I've said it before. You want to see, see how many people love God. You want to see how many people are saved. You think, well, a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of saved people. I mean, sure. well, 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 just go to door to door for a while. Knock on some doors. And when they answer, you say, hey, I just want to ask you. Do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Is he your everything? And see the look you get. And see the answer you get. Well, I, uh, I go to church. I didn't ask you that. I'm a Lutheran. I didn't ask you that. I'm a Catholic. I didn't ask you that. I'm a Methodist. I didn't ask you that either. I said, do you love God with all of your heart? Do you love Jesus with all that you are? Do you love him with all of your being? Come on. I tell you what, if someone comes to my door and says that, I'd be like, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. brother, you have found a brother. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. You have found a brother. Sister, you have found a brother. Come on, because you come to my door and ask me if I love Jesus, if I love God, I'm going to say, oh, you bet you, I, you bet you I do. You bet you. If there's hesitation there, there's a problem. Right? If you, have if you have hesitation, right, there's a problem. There should be no hesitation. If someone asks you, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Is he your all? Is he your everything? You say, you bet you. He sure is. And let's talk about the word. Let's talk about the Lagos. Let's talk about Jesus. Ooh, he's already on rabbit trails. Watch out. This could be a long one. <laughs> Millions of people could not care less about God. I said it right, right? Could not care less. They don't think about God. They have no interest in God at all. There are haters of God, but there are also those who never even think about God. They don't, they don't care at all about it. Not at all. And then many people who sit in churches have a take it or leave it mentality. If they don't like what the Bible says, they leave it on the table. Well, I just don't really like that. Uh, well, uh, that's not how it works. You know, they like it, they take it. They, they don't like it, they leave it. Well, if you find somebody that does not care about what the word of God says, they don't love God. Hello? Lovers of God love God's word. Amen. Well, they love it. And they love everything he has to say. As we've been singing this morning, we're sensitive. We are sensitive to listen. We want to hear you, Father. We want to see you, Jesus. We want to know you. We want to know you more. We want to be led by you, Holy Spirit. We, we want you, Holy Spirit. We want you, God. Yeah. Right? We want. We want to hear him. We, we want all of him. So you find someone that says, well, I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, they're not a lover of God. Come on now. Yeah. When I got saved, I was devouring this. And that's why I grew up so fast in the Lord. I devoured it and I got to know the word of God, which when you get to know the word of God, you get to know God. You get to know Jesus. He is the Logos. He is the word. When you get to know this, you get to know God. And so when you love this, you are showing your love for 
God. Come on now. When you love this, you're showing your love for God. So lovers of God love the word of God. Amen. Now, let's go, let's, let's go back into 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Did I get it right, 1 Corinthians? But, <laughs> but, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Are you a lover of him, of God? And again, in the Young's literal, it says those loving him. So to get the amazing eternal benefit package, come on, we got to love God now. Right now. Soon it will be too late to love God. Hello? You got to choose to love God now. Soon the door is going to be closed on the eternal ark, right? We know about Noah's ark. That's just the type and shadow of what's to come. That's what, that, was the, that was just a shadow of what's coming. And the ark is going to be shut. The eternal ark of God will be shut. And everybody who gets in is a lover of God. And when that door is shut, no one can say, wait, I want to love you now. Too late. Too late. We love God now. And soon the judgment will begin of all mankind. Of course, the, the Christians will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Judge for our works done in the body. Come on now, because we are supposed to live for the Lord when we're saved. The, 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 the unbeliever will be judged for rejecting Jesus and thrown into the lake of fire forever. That's Bible. That's truth. But we have a great package ahead, a benefit package available to us forever, a great reward forever. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we got to love God now. Well, that was a good place for an amen. amen. <laughs> now is the time to love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, as Jesus said, right? I, I, I think he was quoting Deuteronomy, right? He, you you got to love God now with all of your being. Yeah, amen. Hello? The lover of God loves God now. Amen. With 100%. Yeah. All in. Yeah. Not 85%, not, not, not 87%, not even 99%. Come on. 100% in for God. Because we actually truly love him from our hearts, right? Remember, it all comes back to the heart. That's why I say all the time, people can play religion, people can play church, people can play all kinds of religious games, but Jesus, God knows our heart. And so even people who proclaim, I love God, God knows what it's in there. <laughs> and usually you can just see it by the fruit, amen? You can see it. If you're around them, you'll see it. When you love God, there's going to be action because you are loving God, which takes us right into James 1.12. Perfect transition there, but I, I didn't plan, but it's perfect. James 1.12, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love God. Him. Amen. God. Does love matter? Yeah. <laughs> Does love for God matter? I, I think so. I think a little bit. Yeah. It, now, is everybody getting a crown of life? No, no that's another. That's a, this is another verse, right? <laughs> it's kind of like Romans 8, 28. Every, everybody's going everybody's gonna, to everybody's gonna make it to heaven. Everybody's going to make it. Everybody's getting a reward. Everybody, everybody. No, no, not at all. Not at all. No, millions of people won't get a crown of life. It's sad, but it's true. How many? I don't know. No one knows how many are going to make it. We do know Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and narrow is the path that leads to life. Sarah and I were looking the other day. It was 117 billion people have lived on the earth. Is that the right number we saw when we Googled it? 
And then we took like 10% of that and we said, well, maybe, the, maybe there'll be a tie of the people that make it into eternity. I don't remember what it was. It was still a big number, of course. Uh, 200 billion or something. I don't remember. You guys could 10% that. I don't know. You do it. You do it. You do your math. Come on, math guy. 100, no, uh, what? 117 billion? Is only 10 million? 10 billion. Billion. Thank you, thank you. Billion, yes, yes. So 11 billion is still quite a few people. Wouldn't you say? That's a few. Isn't that a few? 11 billion people? I don't know how many are going to be there, but 11 billion is quite a few. You know, the Revelation talks about the sea of glass that will be worshiping God. 11 billion people, that's a, that's a sea of glass right there. Well, narrow is the path that leads to life. Everybody is not getting the crown of life. You know, well, we talked about before. The, the, you go to a funeral and they say, they're in a better place now. And then you're like, not so sure about that. Because I knew that person. Hello? And if you know the person, then you're like, you want to say something, but you don't. You, <laughs> hopefully, right, they cried out to God on their deathbed. And they got saved. They actually gave their heart to Jesus. They actually called on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were saved. They were born again. They became new creations in Christ. Hello? Hello? They didn't just play church. They, they actually were born again. That's, that's essential, right? Jesus said what in John 3, 3? A man must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. I had a Catholic man tell me once, well, I don't like that word born again. I said, you don't like it? It's in the Bible. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Why don't you like it? You better like what the Bible says. You better like the word of God. Yes. Come on now. If you want the crown of life, you better, you better love what God has to say. Amen. And you say, and if you're not born again, you face that verse and you say, I need to know what that is as that verse Nicodemus, right? Nicodemus wanted to know. He wanted to understand. And Jesus said, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus was trying to understand. He said, how can, I, how can I enter into my mother's womb again? That makes no sense, Jesus. Well, he didn't understand spiritual things yet. Hopefully he got it. Hopefully he got it. Amen. We don't know what, what, what Nicodemus got, but hopefully he got it. And he got saved. He didn't display religion as he was doing as a Pharisee. Hello? Glory to God. The lovers of God get a crown of life because they overcame. Hello? And, and as we said a couple weeks ago, or last week, I can't remember now, <laughs> the lover of God is going to endure temptation and overcome because they love God so much. Hello? Amen. When we actually love God... Come on, we overcome. We are overcomers because we love him. We love him. We love his word. And even though our flesh cries out for something, our flesh cries out to sin, our flesh cries out for whatever it is that's, that's uh, uh, not in God's will, not in God's ways, our flesh cries out for it. Our love for God says, no. I'm going to serve God and I'm going to love God. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not going to sin against my God. Remember David? It said David hid his word. He hid his word. Uh, God, his word was hid in his heart so he might not sin against him. When you hide God's word in your heart, come on, you, you, because you love him, so you might not sin against him. You don't, you say, I want to know your word, Father. I want to follow your ways because I love you. And so you put it in there and it grows in you. And then you, when, when the temptation comes, endure temptation. When the temptation comes to not do his will, to not follow his way, even if it's something simple, people always want to think murder and adultery. No, you endure temptation and temptation to not do whatever God says to do. Something simple. God says, 
do this. You say, no, you've sinned. And so endure temptation is anything where we have to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Or, yes, God, I will do it. (laughs) Endure temptation to go the other way. When God says go this way and and you're like, I don't want to go that way. Well, you got to endure temptation to go the other way. When he says go that way. Well, how's that going to happen? That's going to happen if you love God. You're going to go the right way. You're going to do the right thing. Hallelujah. Come on. And then you get the crown of life. Hallelujah. Let's go on. First Corinthians eight. Oh, you're like this again. This, uh, <coughs> these verses are so rich. And if anyone, oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 8, 2. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Woo! There's a woo right there. (laughs) Many educated people do not love God. I'm not saying all, I'm saying many. Have Have you met a few? Well, they've been so educated. In fact, in fact, one of the stats is what a lot of people go to college, go into college with faith, and the, the, the school drives the faith out of them. And they leave college with no faith. Hello? <laughs> they become educated. And, and education system in general, in general, right? I know there are good Christian universities, but in general, they teach a lot of things against God. Paige knows. <laughs> She's involved in it right now. Going to Wazoo, Vancouver. So you, 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 they teach things against God's word, directly against it, on purpose. Why? Because they hate God. And they're highly educated. Well, you know, many of those same educated people think we came from amoebas, which is, is absolute ridiculousness, of course. If you, if, you, if you study evolution at all, you know it's junk science. Really, evolution is a religious belief. You actually have to have a belief in the system. It's a belief system. There is no proof for evolution at all. And, and, and they teach it as there is proof, but there is none. It's completely made up. There is nothing to back it up at all. But uh, 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 people believe it, and they, they, they fall for it completely, and millions of people fall for it completely. Uh, uh, but it's a belief system. You know what? It's much easier to believe God exists and created, much easier than to believe that system. If you, if you, if you study what they believe in that evolution system, you're like, man, you got a lot of faith. You got a lot of faith that the amoeba turned into the boom and the do and the do and the do and pretty soon we got a monkey and and the do, 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 do. I always say, how come I don't have three arms yet? Three arms and four legs, because I sure could use them. How come I don't have six fingers yet? I sure could use another finger. Do you get that? If I'm evolving, I I need to evolve and get some more fingers and toes and some arms. How come we're exactly the same? Exactly. Haven't changed a bit since the beginning. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? You got to have a real belief system for that. You got to have a religious belief system and that's what it is. It's much easier to believe that God created what we see. And that's why Romans 1 says they are without excuse before creation declares the glory of God. And anybody, any normal thinking person, any normal thought person will look up at the sky and go, wow. And they'll look at the stars and go, whoa. And they'll look at the moon and go, wow. And they'll look at the sun and go, woo. And they'll go, And they'll look at themselves and go, amazing. We're a billion dollar, we're billion dollar creatures, right? We're worth billions. 
Because you can't, you can't create this. Any normal thinking person says, oh man, there is a God. Oh, there is a God. Because this did not just happen. And that's easy to believe. And that's why they're without excuse. And they'll stand before God and he'll say, did you never look at the stars? And they'll say, yes, I did. Did you never look at the moon? Well, sure I did. Did you never look at the sun? Absolutely. Did you never look at your body? Of course I did. You're without excuse. Hello? That's, that's easy to believe. In fact, I don't know if you know C.S. Lewis. He, he, he used that a lot with his arguments of apologetics, right? That's when you defend Christianity. He used that a lot. It's so simple. It's so simple. If you just look at the body, if you just think about it for a few minutes, but see, they have a religious belief system that overcomes any normal thought process. And so that religious belief system overcomes truth. Lies. I'm preaching. Lies overcome the truth. And it's like, it's like, I'll give you another example. This is, you know, me in the rabbit trails. Here we go. And so, so I'm, we're down at the port and, and, and we're handing out my book to people all over the place. And it was fun. Griff and I were just having fun. We're like, would you like, would you like this book I wrote? It'll change your life. And people were grabbing it left and right. And I'm like, boom, this is fun. Woo. Would you like this book I wrote? It'll change your life. They're like, okay, okay. One woman said, one woman said, when I handed her the book, she said, would you like this book I wrote? It'll change your life. She said, glory. Is that about Jesus? Glory. I said, did you say glory? I found a sister. I found a sister. Because there wasn't a lot of that going on, right? There were people just taking it, though, which I was kind of surprised. Well, so we handed it to this one boy on the sidewalk there who's sitting with his family. And we're just, you know, hand it around. Just here, you want a book? You want a book? They take it. On we go. And so this boy takes it, and pretty soon we're still going, and, 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 and this boy comes back to us as we're walking back the other way, and he says, uh, well, he asks us a question, like, uh, do you believe in uh, baptism or something for salvation? And I'm like, ah. He's young, yeah, you know. And I'm like, oh, boy. Hard to have a theological discussion with an eight-year-old or whatever. So I'm like, ooh, okay, uh, here we go, you know. So we start having a little discussion and I'm trying to explain things, you know, from the Bible, amen. And uh, he says, well, I need to give this book back to you because my mom said you, you said, you said you didn't say you had to be saved by baptism. Because she had glanced through that book really fast. I don't know how she did that fast, but five minutes, you know, five minutes, she read the whole book, I guess. And, <laughs> and uh, so, so here, here, she, here she comes, right? And now she, we, she's starting to ask me about baptism in water and saying, you don't believe you have to be baptized to be saved? I said, well, of course not. That's not Bible. Well, sure it is. It says, you believe and baptize, you'll be saved. There is one verse. There is one verse that says, you believe and be baptized, you will be saved. And then he says right after that, if you don't believe, you're condemned already. Notice he didn't say baptism right there. He said, if you don't believe. And then I started quoting Bible like Romans 10, 9, which we quote every week around here. If you believe in your heart that Jesus has risen from the dead and you confess him as Lord, you will be saved. And it says right after that, which we don't usually read, Romans 10, 10, for with the heart, uh, uh, belief, uh, what's that? With the heart, man believes unto salvation, well, unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And, and we started having discussion. I started quoting more Bible and more Bible and more Bible, right? Because I can quote a lot of Bible. If you get me started, watch out. And so I'm like, I could see this was going nowhere because she was Apostolic Lutheran, and they hold to that absolute fact that if you are not baptized in water, you will not be in heaven. And I said, I understand your beliefs. 
I, I understand it completely. And I understood you've been taught that. I understand your pastor says it all the time. I understand all that. And I know today I will not be changing your mind because that is your belief system. Belief system. And when you hold to a belief system, I didn't tell you, you know, when you hold to a belief system that is a lie, then you've held to it. And so what, ha what, what she has to do to come into the real salvation, right? Not that she isn't even saved because her heart might belong to Jesus. She might have given herself to the Lord. She knows in her heart Jesus' life. She knows he's Lord. She, she, he is her Lord. But she believes with an absolute belief, absolute, that if you're not baptized in water, you are not saved. And you will not see the Lord. You will not be in eternity with God forever if you're not immersed in water. Well, well, I feel sorry for all those people who cried out to God on their deathbed and didn't make it to heaven. Hello? I feel sorry for those people in World War I who were in the foxhole and they're about to be mutilated by a bomb and they go, Jesus! You're Lord! I believe in you! I trust you completely! I give myself to you! And the bomb comes in and blows them up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry they didn't make it because they weren't put in water. See what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But see, this is what I'm saying. With a religious belief system, we get into ridiculousness. And, and, and oh boy, it'll get me started, watch out. <laughs> King James only? What? What? King James is a translation with many bad translations in it. So is New King James. There is no perfect translation. King James is the inspired version. If you don't use, King, we've had people sit right there and say, you don't use the King James only? I cannot come to this church. I'm like, bye-bye. Because they don't want truth. See, there's all kinds of people that have come through and tell me, well, you don't, you don't believe this? Then I can't come here. I say, well, bye-bye. You don't believe this? It's not Bible. Well, then I can't come here. Bye-bye. Come on now. I want the truth. I don't want a religious belief system full of lies. I want the truth. And, and, and educated people are full of, ugh. Not that I'm saying not get your education. Get your education where you need your education, amen? I got my education where I needed my education. I went to Bible school. <laughs> and I've told you before, there was a lot of junk there. Where I didn't even know if some of my professors were saved. And I'm like, hmm, hmm, this is weird. Come on now. Education does not make one saved. God does not reveal himself to the smartest person in the room. <laughs> if I just get more education, I'm gonna know God. No! No, 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 no. That's a misconception found even in churches. And too many churchgoers believe being highly educated means more than love for God. Right? I told you before, churches will hire their pastor based on their seminary education. Primarily, how many degrees do you have? What is your degree in? The question should be, do you love God? And let me, let me, tell me about your fruit for the Lord. Tell me what you've done for Jesus. Ooh, now we're talking my language. Tell me, tell me. Come on. Oh man, I've said it for years. Christians, Christians, Christians. You know, oh man. Don't even tell people about Jesus. Hello? If we love God, we are going to be telling people about Jesus. Because <laughs> we know that's the only answer. It's the only way. The only, only thing, the only truth there is. Come on. The only way to eternity is through Jesus Christ the Lord. And so we're going to be telling some people. Amen. Hello? And so lovers of God are going to be doing that. And you don't necessarily have to have the education to do it. Amen? Some of the mightiest men of God that have ever walked this earth 
Uh, I'm thinking of Smith, Smith Wigglesworth in particular, but there's many, many, many that have very, very, very little education, but were some of the mightiest, mightiest preachers of the word of God. My own pastor preached, just retired, but 40 years of pastoring the same church and his education was not good. And he admits it in his writing, not good, right? Misspellings, things you can't understand because you're like, I don't know what this is. Well, it's truth. But he preached and got people saved for years yeah. and taught people what I'm teaching you today for years and years and years and years and years and did the will of the Father because he loved God. Hello. See, God reveals himself to those who love him. As we talked about last week, God is hiding himself. Remember we read Isaiah? God hides himself so that only those who love him will see him. You have to love him first. <laughs> Come on now. You have to love him to see him. What, what, what do we just read? Well, we, we could read another verse, but, but if, if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Was it John, uh, John uh, is it 14, 21? He says, if you love me and do my commandments, I, I will manifest myself to you. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. God will manifest to those who love him. And you'll see God. We'll see God. If you want to see more of God, you just love him more. Did you know we can increase in our love for God? And we need to. We're doing this series for that, for that very reason. Come on. Many Christians proclaim great love for God. They have no fruit for God. They proclaim great love for God. They have no service for God. You, you think you have a high level of God, high level of love for God? Talk to Paul. That guy loved God. And he was willing to get beat and shipwrecked and beat again and shipwrecked again and beat and beat and shipwrecked. Come on. And, and get robbed and get shipwrecked and get beat again for God. Because he loved him. Yeah. Talk to Peter, right? You think you have a high level of love. Got crucified upside down. Upside down. Because he didn't want to be crucified like the Lord. He wasn't worthy to be crucified upright like the Lord. He's... Do it upside down. I'll die upside down because I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. That's love for God. That's love for Jesus. We live in an age where people just say, you're, you're fine. You're fine. You're doing good. You're doing fine. No, we, we need to be told the truth if we're not doing fine. Thank you for those one amens and those goods. Remember last week we read James where he called Christians adulterers and adulteresses because God was in second place. See, when God is in second, we are adulterers. James said it. I know we talk about James all the time. James liked to slap us in the face, put us in our place. I like that. Many, many Christians put God in second place, but God said throughout the word of God from beginning to end, he said, I got to be first. Mm -hmm. I got two amens on that one. Do not think God is happy, right? If you put him in second place. You want the truth today, don't you? Or do you want a nice little message? <laughs> nice little message. Yeah. You want the truth, right? If you want a lukewarm church, you have not found it. You can go find another church. Uh, Jesus said he's going to spit out the lukewarm. I don't want to be in that camp. See, God is not pleased when Christians put cars ahead of him. I told the story of the minister. He said he had, a, he had a Corvette. He always wanted a Corvette. He got this nice Corvette and he was washing it all the time and he was cleaning it all the time. He was detailing it and he was cleaning it and he was cleaning it. And God said, that is an idol to you. And he sold that car and got rid of it. He had put it ahead of God. See, God's not, not pleased when we, 
we put sports ahead of him. Many people put sports ahead of God all the time. I told you, <laughs> this one's really sad. We had a, we had a, this is years ago now, but the, we had an elder in the church and he called me on, on Super Bowl Sunday and said, I won't be at church today. I said, oh, what's going on? What's happening? Thought something was wrong, right? He's not going to be in church. Super Bowl's today. I need to prepare for the Super Bowl and have my party, my Super Bowl party. I said, Super Bowl's at 3.30, church is at 10.30, or we might go to 3.30, but you know, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, that's sad, isn't it? Yeah. A sport game comes ahead of going to church with the body of Christ? Come on, God's not happy when Christians put hobbies ahead of him. Put work ahead of him. Well, I got to work. I got to work. I got to work. Well, if you work on Sundays, you work, you, you need to get that worked out. Amen. Amen. I've had many people years. Well, I'm working on Sunday now, but I, I'm going to get that off as soon as possible. I'm getting that off and I'm being church. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. Why? Because you know, it's important and you're going to put him first on the first day of week and you're going to worship with the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. God is not pleased when Christians don't even support his things. It, it's, it, it, you're not doing all right. I won't, I won't, I won't sugarcoat it. If you're not, if you're not, God is not in first place. You won't even support his things. You're, you're not doing okay. Something's wrong in your heart. Something's not right in here. You, you need to get it switched out real quick. Because the end is coming soon. You need to get things straightened out and get him first. Get him in first place. Get, make him your first love. As we talked about last week, we sang first love. We, we, we got to get him in first place. You got to put him first before it's over. It's almost over. There's not enough time to keep playing games with God. It's time to get things switched up. It's time to get things put in the right place. It's time to get the priorities worked out. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that sound like the book of Revelation there? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Jesus, how he, he kept telling the church throughout the first uh, what, three books of Revelation. He says to the church, to the church, to the church, you're doing this good, but you're not doing this good. You're doing this good, but you are not doing this good. You need to repent and get it switched out real quick. All right, all right, let's go on. First John 2. Oh, you're going to like this. First John 2, 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And, uh, 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 oh, what translation is it? There's another translation that says, love for the Father is not in him. That word, the Greek word can be translated either way. The love for the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. But pastor, I didn't think we had to do anything. He who does the will of God abides forever. So many Christians today say, it doesn't matter what I do. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> no, you're not saved by works, but if you're saved, you're going to be working for the Lord. Yeah. If you're saved, it, you, you, got, you can't but help do it. Because yes. God's in there. That's why I say whenever I see no fruit from a, from a Christian, a churchgoer, I'm like, how come there's no fruit? Because if your God's in there, there's going to be some fruit. There's going to be some works. Not for your salvation, but because your heart is changed, has been changed. The truth is it matters greatly what we do. He who does the will of God abides forever. Right? Get rid of the lies that have been taught in many pulpits. Turn on YouTube and a preacher and you're like, oh my goodness, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've 
ought to be kidding me. You're actually preaching that? Oh, my goodness. See, every pastor does not teach the truth. Every pastor does not love God. People think it's a pastor. He must love God. He must love God. He's in the pulpit. He's got to love God. No! Yeah, well, we read it during that series. What, no vacancy was it? He transforms, uh, Satan transforms people into ministers of righteousness. Satan transforms himself into ministers. They stand in the pulpit and they don't even love God. It's happening. You better be aware. Hello? Doing the will of God is extremely important. It says those who do the will of God abide forever. Those who do what they want, they don't love God. The lovers of God do the will of the Lord. The lovers of God are going to be busy for the Lord. Very busy for the Lord. Amen. When we choose the ways of the world, we're showing what we love. And the world is self-seeking, rebellious, and defiant to God. So are we self-seeking? Are we rebellious? Are we defiant to God? Right? We, what do we got to do? As Paul said, judge yourself lest you be judged. Come on now. If you want to judge yourself really easy, this is a really easy test. Where does your time and money go? Gives us away every time. <laughs> you can't hide it. You can't hide it. If you, if, 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 if you track your time, you track your money, you see where it all goes, does it all go to the world? Hello? Then you don't love God. Time, money, time, money, time. You track it. You could write it down for a week, right? Write it down for a week. Where does, where's my time going? Where's my money going? Where's my time? Where's my money? Where's time, time, money, time? Where's it all going? Where's God in all that by the end of the week? Where's God? Huh, nothing for God at all. I didn't give, I didn't serve, I didn't do anything. Wait, I went to church on Sunday. <laughs> wait, wait, right there. <laughs> Come on now. When we love the world, that's where our time will go. Hello? When we love the world, that's where our money goes, to the world. Now, of course, we know we got to live in this world, right? We're going to have to buy some groceries unless we grow it all ourselves, like these guys. You know. <laughs> but how much do we love this world? That's a very, very important question, right? It says if we are a lover of the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Or the love for the Father. Right? You know, we've talked about the word love many times around here, but I think it's important to mention it again, Right? I changed my vocabulary years ago, and I don't say I love cars. I love that car. No, no, I don't love that car. I love, I love my boat. No, I don't love my boat. I love, I love this, I love that, right? Do you love your car? Do you love your house? Do you love your bank account? Do you love your hobby? Do you love pizza? Hello. In the English, we don't have a great word. We have love. Greek has uh, five words. I think we looked it up today. We, again, we, five words for love. Agape, of course, being the unconditional love of God, the highest, highest love, agape love. But in English, we have love. And so I made the switch a long time ago. I love God. I love people. I love Jesus. I love my Father. I love, I love my God, Right? I love you. I love my family. I love the saints of God. I love the body of Christ. That's all good. Amen. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to love the body, to love God. That's wonderful. But when we love the world, we're in trouble. So a good, a good thing to keep, you know, to keep your mouth in check, right, is to change that phrase. Well, I love that car. I want, I want to say when I hear it, uh, do you really love it or you did a slip of the tongue, right? Because you don't love that car. Please tell me you don't love it. <laughs> right? Come on now. It's a good change to make. Amen. Yeah. 
The world is going away. All, all of this stuff is going away. All the world system is going away. The world system is built on the devil's lies. So, so we should not love the temporary things of earth. The world is going to burn with fervent heat very, very, very soon, as, as the Bible says. And, and, and so, yeah, we can appreciate nice things. Amen? We can use things while we're here. We, we got to use things right here. You're using a chair right now, aren't you? That's nice. You get, a, you get to use a nice chair. We, have, we, have, we didn't really need the heat today, I don't think, but we have a heater in here. That's nice to use, isn't it, when it's winter and it's 50 degrees outside? Or 40 or 30. That's about cold as it gets around here. 30, if it gets 30, man, we're freezing at the beach. <laughs> so we, we use things, amen? We appreciate having things. Uh, uh, and we, we can use things while we're here on earth. But... Make sure you're using what you have for the glory of God. If what you have is not being used for the glory of God at all, that's a problem. Your house is not just for you. It's for, to use, be used for the glory of God. Come on now. Your car, use it for the glory of God somehow, some way, right? Use it for the glory of God. Whatever you have, use it for the glory of God. Come on, our stuff should be used for God or, or we've missed it. We're serving the world. Hello, see God gives us good things to enjoy, but we're supposed to, first of all, also, also, also don't forget to give thanks for it. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the heater we have in this place. Thank you for the lights we have in this place. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given us to enjoy while we're here. But I don't love anything here, thing. Hello? I don't love anything on earth because pretty soon I know it's all going to be gone. So we use it. We can appreciate it. We can give thanks that we have it to use. But we don't love it. We love God. We love people. Come on. The world system has removed God out of everything. Have you noticed? So, so if the world system has removed God, guess what? The world system should not taste good to us. If it tastes good, something's wrong. Amen. See, the world we live in should not taste good. Schools, primarily, that's a huge, that's a huge topic, right? Took, took God out of the schools. Took out prayer. Man, you bring the Bible, they want to... You bring a Bible to school for. What's wrong with you? Bring a Bible to school. Yeah, bring your Bible to school. <laughs> we, still have, we still have freedom <laughs> to bring a Bible to school. Oh, man, don't get me started. Oh, don't get me started. They want to quote separation of church and state. You know, a lot of those people think it's actually in the Constitution. It's not. It's in a letter. A letter written by Jefferson. I think it was Jefferson. He wrote a letter. And now they declare it as law. It's not a law at all. It's a letter. Come on now. And he was defending the church against the state. It's exactly opposite of what they say. Everything, it's a lie. It's a lie of the devil, of course. The father of lies. He, he is the father of lies and he, he continues to lie about that all the time. You can talk to people about that and they'll have no clue what you're talking about because they've been lied to their whole life. Well, you know, the church and the state, they can't do things. Oh, no, you can't do it. You can't bring a Bible in school, separate church and state. <laughs> ha. You believe the lie, you fall for the lie. Hopefully you wake up before it's too late. You see, the world should not taste good to us. Because that's what he said. The love, if the love for the world is in you, the love for the Father is not. Now, let's look at 2 Timothy 3. We're getting there. You know me. This is supposed to be on the short messages again. <laughs> it was only 20 pages. I thought that's short. 2 Timothy 3, 1. 
but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. That's the title, the perilous times. Perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Boy, they blaspheme God all the time. I hear it, I hear it all the time. Disobedient to parents. Well, you see that more than ever, right? Woo! Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal. Boy, you see that a lot. You see it on the news, you're like, that is so brutal. They go up, they go up and just beat people on the street. You're like, what is happening? Well, what's happening? We're in the last days. Despisers of good. Traitors, Woo. headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. What are we talking about? Loving God. Those loving God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. That's so mean, Pastor. <laughs> well, you better do it. You want to make it through. So what has created these perilous times we live in. Well, I'll tell you what's created these perilous times, people loving the world instead of loving God. It's quite simple. All of the things we're reading there, they love the world. And that's created what we have, these perilous times we live in. People all over the world love pleasure. More pleasure, more pleasure. I just need more pleasure rather than love God. More fun. More fun, more vacations, more entertainment. Watch, watch another game, church? No, I just, I gotta watch the game. I gotta watch the game. I gotta watch the game. Come on now. I just, I heard a, I heard a, a clip. There's a guy I follow on Instagram. He's a, a he's, he puts on clips, old clips of, of older preachers, older, and this woman intercessor, I forgot her name, but she was kind of a famous name. But she got up to the pulpit and she said, you want to learn about intercessory prayer, do you? And she started saying, it's work. It's work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> pleasure. They want more pleasure, right? Intercessory prayer is, is going in to the spiritual realm in prayer, come on now, and interceding for somebody and crying out to God for them and crying, literally crying for them, interceding in tongues for them, interceding in your, in your known language for them. Come on, and, and, and it's work. Lovers of pleasure. Hello? They don't love God, they love pleasure. That's gonna create perilous times. Amen. Come on now. People all over the world love money, right? They want more money to spend on themselves because they love themselves. <laughs> they sacrifice their kids, right? As, as both parents work and work and work and work and work and work and, and they sacrifice their kids on the altar so they can have more money. It's sad, very sad. You know, when, when we had kids, I, 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 I don't even know how we did it. I honestly don't know how we did it. But I told Karen, we're going to homeschool, and you're, you're going to homeschool, and I'm going, I'm, a, I'm, I'm working. And, and even, 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 <laughs> even spiritual people told me, you can't do that. You won't make it. You better do it if you want your kids to turn out godly. We got kids who serve the Lord. Why? Because we didn't throw them into the prison cell of school and be indoctrinated with lies. Come on now. It wasn't about the money. Well, I just need to work. And Karin, you need to work. We both need to work full time because we need more money. Ah! And God says you're sacrificing your kids on the altar so you can have a nicer car. You can have a nicer house. Go get a, get, go get a $2,000 car and go get a cheap house and, and don't sacrifice your kids on the altar. Amen. Hello, I'm preaching. Right. What would have happened if America had done that? Well, we'd have a lot of godly kids. 
Now we've we got a lot of ungodly kids, bunches of them. Why? Because they've been indoctrinated in, in school. Christian knows how horrible it is in there. <laughs> Make you watch demonic stuff. Make you read, even in my day, my day, that was a long time ago. We had to read demonic books in school. Had to. Read them, take tests on them, do essays on them, give speeches on them. Demonic books. You say, what demonic book? I think you can think of a few that you had to read in school. You know, there's a lot of them. And people say, no, that's a classic. It's absolute garbage, is right. Well, that's a classic. You got to read that classic book. That classic book is full of demonic activity. That classic book is full of demons. And so you got to read it. You got to take a test on it. You got to write an essay on it. And so we throw our kids into that because we love money. No, 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 no. Do all you can to make sure your kids serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if that's cut, well, we, took, we took all kinds of cuts in income to do what the Lord Jesus Christ said to do. Amen. Come on now. People would much rather spend money on pleasures than on God's things. They love money. Well, we just need to take another vacation. <laughs> I haven't had a vacation in years. Just take another vacation. Yeah, what, what is a vacation? I don't know. What's a vacation? We didn't take another vacation. So we're going to spend 5000 on our vacation. How much you give God this year? Well, I gave 100 once this year, I think. Hello. See, they love money. They love pleasure. And that has created perilous times. People all over the world just love themselves, which creates this evil that we, we, we could go through all those again. But uh, people are unthankful because they love themselves. Even, even in the church, you find it. Unholy, haughty. People slander others. We've had people slander us in church. Come on now. People go out of here and slander us, lie about us. Hello. I've had people tell me they love me and they'll never forsake me. And then the next week, they smear my name around town. They were in church. Hello? Well, they love themselves. They don't love God. Hello? Well, you better repent. You just do stuff like that. Repent quickly. That's, you know, if we were in the Old Testament, those people would be swallowed up already. Yeah. Remember, remember Korah and Moses? Come on now. You don't slander the things of God. You just keep your mouth shut. That's a very wise decision. Keep your mouth shut. Hello. I find it very interesting here. It says having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And this is in the list of perils in the last days. You see, many church going people just want religion. They don't want the power. If they don't want the power, they don't want the reality of God because God is powerful. They don't want the reality. They love the world system. A form of godliness is one of the worst perils of our times. A form of godliness. I call that the lukewarm. And what did Jesus say? Lukewarm Christian going to be spit out. In fact, it actually says vomit. Literally says vomit. I'll vomit the lukewarm out of my mouth. I want to vomit the lukewarm out of my mouth. I'm serious. It's disgusting. Well, I love Jesus. And they have nothing for Jesus. They do nothing for Jesus. I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. As James said, I'll show you my faith by my works because I do love Jesus and I've given my whole life to Jesus and I've given my all to Jesus. Come on. I've given everything to Jesus. I've laid everything on the altar for Jesus. 
So I have all kinds of works for Jesus because I love him. And if you truly love him, you're going to have all kinds of works for him. And so don't tell me you love him. You don't do anything for him. Be like me saying, Karin, I love you. I love you. I love you. I don't do anything for her. Makes no sense. You love your spouse. You do something for them. You try and help them some way, somehow, whatever it is. Come on now. I told you, Karin likes to bring me coffee at 8 a.m. He wants to help me. Sometimes it doesn't help because I'm like, I'm still sleeping. That's okay. <laughs> She's like, it's time to get up. <laughs> That's good though, right? Well, she's doing it because she wants to help me. You know, this is a famous old story, famous old uh, cliche or whatever. But the wife will come in and say, you're not wearing that. And the man goes, what's wrong with this? And the woman goes, you ain't going to public like that. Why? Because she loves him, wants to help him. Not look like a fool. <laughs> well, I've done that with cards. She's asked me. She said, uh, what do you think of this shirt? I'm like, no, please don't wear that. Card pages that I do, I know. No, please don't wear that one. No, no. Why? Because we're trying to help them. We, we love them, right? It's like, when, oh, here's another. Boy, these things are just coming. So you see someone, you're back here eating a snack with someone, and they got this big chunk of muffin on their face. Muffin face. And, 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 you, and, you, and you go, hey, you got something right there. You got something right there. Oh, oh, good, thanks. Oh, they can take the, you know, get it off of there. Why'd you do that? Because you love them. You didn't want to walk around for 20 minutes back there with a big piece of muffin on their face and everybody just stares at the muffin as they talk to them. They keep staring at their face to look at their lip because you love them. You said, hey, you got something right there. See what I'm saying? When you love, when you love God, when you love people, you're trying to help them. You're trying to help them get on the right path. You're trying to help them do the right thing. You're trying to help them hear well done. You're trying to help them get in the right place. You're trying to get, help them hear well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of your Lord. So you want to help them because you love them. Yeah. So you'll say whatever you need to say. Yeah. And you do whatever you need to do because you want them to actually hear that from the words from the mouth of Jesus. You want, to hear, you want them to hear well done. Amen. Why? Because you do love them. If you don't really love them, you won't say what you need to say and you'll cover it and you'll hide it and you'll say, well, I don't really want to offend them. I don't want to. That's not a good pastor. A good pastor is going to say it. And, and, and I, I, as Sarah said, I can't make anybody do anything. I can't make anybody change their minds. I, I couldn't make the Apostle Lutheran change her mind that baptism in water is, is necessary for salvation. But I'm going to tell her the truth. And I did. And maybe it planted a seed. Maybe she'll think about it. Maybe she'll consider that there, there are 400 scriptures that go against what she believes. I hope so. Come on now. See, lovers of God are not on the throne of their, their own lives. God is on the throne. And God lovers love what God loves. And God lovers not only love what he loves, they hate what he hates. When you, find out, when you find out God hates it, you say, I hate that too. Amen. Five minutes ago, I loved it, but now I hate it. Amen. <laughs> I repent of loving that because now I found out God hates that. <laughs> Come on. God lovers want to be around God's things. Amen. Hallelujah. God lovers want all the power of God to manifest. You know, there's many people, many people that, 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 that get offended at our type of church because that we've had, you know, people fall out sometimes, people dance, people shout, people run laps. Uh, they don't want to see that. They just want to come and have a nice little quiet service. They don't want anybody to shout like me. <laughs> no, 
No, we want all of God. And if the, when the power of God shows up in the manifest power of God, as we, we had the series on glory, the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. We want the glory of God to manifest. We want him to manifest. We want people to fall down under the power. Why? Because God showed up. Now there is the fake and people always want to, the people always want to, uh, uh, well, that's all fake. No, it's not all fake. Some of it is fake. But I can guarantee, I have experienced it firsthand, and I, I, well, here we go, here's the story. I told you this before, I was getting prayed for by one of my, my, one of my mentors in the faith, one of the greatest men of God on the earth today, I still believe. He, he was praying for people, and it was at a minister's conference, and there was only, it was a small conference, it, he, he, he preaches to thousands, but he was, <laughs> he was at our small minister's conference, which was really nice, 200 people there, you know, cool. And so uh, he prayed for everybody there. You know, a lot of times you can't pray for everybody when there's 10,000 in a meeting. But when there's 200 there, you can pray for everybody. And so he said, I want to pray for anybody who wants prayer tonight. Uh, come on up. And so we stood in line. We, we were getting prayer. And they were moving us through as, you know, people got prayed for and people were falling and, and, and people were laughing and people were crying and people, you know, it was, you know. So, so I, was, I was in line to get prayer. Karen was right next to me. And, and he laid hands on me. He prayed in tongues over me. And I was hoping maybe, you know, maybe he'd give me a word from heaven, you know, English. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he'll, because I, I, when you respect, I mean, I respect this guy top, right? And, and if he says something to me in English, I mean, I, I believe that is from God, right? If he says something to me direct from God, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be writing that down immediately, right? Like, whoo, I got to get that down now. But he just prayed over me in tongues. And I thought, well, praise the Lord. I got what I needed to get. Prayed in tongues over me and, and stopped and went to Karen and started praying over her in English. <laughs> and she got a word in, in no language, right? And then I'm standing over here just praising the Lord, right? And, and, and I had no intention of doing it, no thought of doing it. I just said, whatever you got, Father, for me, whatever, whatever gift I just received, because Paul said, I want to lay hands on you. They might receive a spiritual gift. And so I believed I received a gift from God. I believe I had an had a impartation from this man of God that I highly, highly respect. I, and, and I told you before, I think since that time, my preaching has gotten better. Yeah. And I believe that was part of the gift I got, was, was part of that, because he's, he's a great preacher. And I believe my preaching increased after that point, and I got a spiritual gifting in that area. And, and then I'm just standing there worshiping God, thanking him for the impartation that I received. And all of a sudden, the power hit me and I started going down. And I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And I had no intention of falling down. And the usher was behind car now because they, they had people behind just in case you fell, right? And so, and so he reaches over, he sees me going, whoo! And he, he breaks my fall, which I, I believe the angel would have caught me anyhow, because if he had missed me, they would have been there. But he broke my fall, and I, I went down hard, and I laid there, and this has happened to me once before, before that, once before, and I was stuck to the ground, could not get up, and I was laughing hysterically with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I was filled with joy, and I was laughing and stuck, just as I had been before years ago. I was stuck to the ground. The ushers came by again. Here we go again. I thought, here we go again. And they said, well, you got to get up. We got more people coming through for prayer. <laughs> and I said what I said before the years ago. I said, I can't. I can't. I can't get up. I, don't, I still don't know what was sitting on me. I don't know just the power of God, an angel of God, the Holy Spirit, whatever sits on you, boy, when it sits on you, you can't get up. And so that's the glory of God manifested. We want that. <laughs> You're in a church that wants that and doesn't shun it as many churches do. You raise hands in some churches, they tell you to leave. Excuse me, we don't, we don't do that here. You must be in the wrong church. There's that church down the road called Pack Bible. Pack Bible Church. You, you might want to try that church. You might, you probably fit in there. <laughs> we, we had someone the other day talking to someone and, and, and they said, uh, they asked about our church and she said, they told her, we're, we're, we're a little too much. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like to be a little too much. 
as I said, I've said before, I've said it a long time, but we were, we were out with a guy, a uh, photographer, and he was taking our pictures and stuff, and, and we were talking with him, and he said, boy, you guys are very Christian. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, that's a compliment. I like that. I don't think it was meant to be a compliment, but uh, I'll take that as a compliment any day. Amen. You are very Christian. You are too much. That means I love God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And lovers of God, whoo, get the crown of life. Yeah. Glory to God. See, the more we love the world, the less real God becomes to us. Many times people think God is distant from them. They think God has left them. Where has God gone? And God is just saying, you got to draw near to me. Where's your love for me? Because <laughs> as soon as we start loving on him, come on, and doing what he said, what does it say? He will manifest. Where's God? Where'd he go? Go to him. Love on him. Minister to him, right? As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Lord said in Acts. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Lord said. Did you catch that? As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Lord said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, to the work that I've called them. Woo! Paul and Barnabas got called out into ministry as they ministered to the Lord. What happened as they were ministering to the Lord and they were fasting? God showed up and the glory of God fell and God spoke. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. God's getting all kinds of things out there. I love it. Praise God. Glory to God. When we love the world, God seems less and less and less real. And the more we love the world, the less he will seem real to us. And eventually, if we keep following the world, it's not good. It's not good. All right. I think we finally got to the end. 2 Timothy 4. We still got a song, though. And we're going to finish this up with a song pretty soon. And you're going to like it because it's an old standard. I won't give it away yet. Second Timothy 4, 9. Be diligent to come to me quickly. Who's he talking to? Timothy. Timothy, be diligent to come to me quickly. Paul, you're so mean. <laughs> See what I, That goes back to being a doer of the word. Amen. It's okay. Be diligent to come to me quickly, Timothy. What does he say after that? For Demos has forsaken me. Ooh. Having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica. Then he mentions a few more people. Cretans for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. They left, but they, I don't think they left for the wrong reasons. Demos left for the wrong reasons. He forsook Paul for the world. Right? Paul, arguably, is one of the greatest men who ever walked the earth. Men of God. You, you would be hard-pressed to find one except Jesus, right? Of course, Jesus is number one. But I think Paul probably comes in second. <laughs> I don't know if we could find a, a, greater, a greater man of God than Paul after Jesus. And here, Demas was with him. And he was seeing miracles. He was seeing people get saved. He was in the ministry with Paul, the apostle. Yeah, yeah. He, whoo, he's in ministry with the apostle Paul, who, who, of course, you know, when you're in the situation, a lot of times you don't understand what you're in. And I don't think Demas understood what he was in at that time. But looking back, I'm sure he's like, Oh, man, did I miss it. But see, something drew him back to the world. Hello? Drew him back. He loved the world. He forsook Paul for the world. What? We don't know why. Maybe he loved money. He had to go get some more money. He's like, Paul, this ain't going to work. My paycheck is not big enough. Yeah. <laughs> 
This, this $100 a week stuff just is not going to work, Paul. I can go down the road. I can get 1000 a week. Paul, see ya. Maybe, maybe he loved gambling. Maybe he had a problem with gambling. There, there was a lot of gambling then too, you know. Maybe he loved uh, uh, women. There's a lot of problems with that then, right? Prostitution was everywhere. They worshiped goddesses. They had all kinds of weird stuff going on. Paul talked about it. There was a lot of weird stuff happening. Maybe he loved going to the bar. And he's like, Paul's like, no, you're not going there today. You're not going there anymore. And he's like, but I like that. Hello? Maybe he loved going to the carriage races at the Coliseum. <laughs> he loved betting on the carriages, betting on the horses. He bet, on, he bet on the carriages. And he's like, Paul's like, no, we're in the ministry. We're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have time for that. And first, first of all, we don't have time for second of all, it's sinful. <laughs> Come on now. Wasting God's resources on betting on horses. Hello. Come on, we don't know why he left, but he loved something in the world. He, he loved something more than God, and, and he decided to leave and live for the world. And more than likely, he never made it back. Come on now. May none of us leave our place in the body to go back. Amen. You know, really, there is not time to even think about it. We shouldn't have time to think about going back to the world. We got way too much to do for the Lord. Amen? Amen. We got way too much to accomplish for Jesus. We got way too much to do for Jesus. We got way too much to produce. Remember the parable of talents we read in offering? We got way too much to produce for the Lord Jesus Christ than to think about going back to the world. Yeah. As Demos did. See, and don't think it can't happen to you. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. Well, you know, <laughs> that could never happen to me. I'm so solid. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so godly. I'm so founded. I'm, no, could never happen to me. Pride comes before a fall. fall. See, if it can happen to Demos, who was with Paul, it can happen to you. And it can happen to me. Did it happen to Judas? Judas hung with Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. And he left Jesus. Woo! And what did he leave for? What is that we're talking about? Money. Boy, he regretted that one, didn't he? Went back through the money at him. Said, I don't want this. And then went and hung himself. Because he realized he had forsaken Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. You see, we must be aware the world is trying to draw us back in. So what do we have to do? We have to set our face to serve the Lord the rest of our lives. Come on. We have to set it. We have to set it in our hearts. We have to set it absolute. No, I will never serve the world. I will serve the Lord. Come on. We have to set our face to, to, to serve him only, to look at him only. Come on. To look at Jesus, as it says, the author. Look at Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Yes. Amen. We got to set our love on him fully. Yes. Fully on God, not half-heartedly, not lukewarmly. Come on now. We must not listen to the lies of the world. Or what's going to happen? We're going to go back. If we listen to the world, it's going to pull us back in. So we must not listen to the lies because the world is filled with lies. The devil is the father of lies and he runs this world system. In fact, the Bible even calls him the God of this world. That tells you why you don't love the world. Because then you love the devil. Our heart must truly say, like the song we're going to sing, no turning back. Amen. No turning back, right? Yeah. It can't just be lip service. Come on, it's got to be from our heart. It can't.
can't just be lip. It's got to be heart lip, heart lip. Just as, just as Romans 10, 9, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Amen. When, we say, when we say we're not turning back to the world, right? We're saying it from our heart. The world has nothing for us. The world has nothing for us. Don't even think it has something for you. It has nothing for you. It's all going away soon. It's almost done. It's almost finished. It's almost kaput. Don't go back and serve what's going to die and go kaput. It's all going to rust, okay, and then burn. New heavens, new earth. That's what I want. Just as the Bible says, we get the new heavens. We get the new earth. We get the perfectness of God forever. So don't serve this world, which is all going away. Come on now. Our job is to love God more and more and more and more and more and more and more. And more. In fact, when he appears in the clouds, when Jesus appears in the clouds, come on, our love is at the highest point ever. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> We're on fire more than we've ever been when he appears in the clouds. Come on now. Our love has been increasing and increasing for our God and he appears and we just go, we're out of here. Amen. Come on. No, we, 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 we should want to leave this place when he appears. You don't want to leave until you're finished here. Amen. Cause Paul said, I'm going to finish my, my race. What did he say before that? I have a desire to depart because he's been there. He had visitation with Jesus himself. He got revelation from Jesus himself. That's why, that's why he wrote what he wrote. He got it from Jesus himself. And he had a desire to depart, but he said, it's far better that I stay with you to help you. Because why? He loved the body. And so he was willing to love the body and stay here, but he wanted to depart because the sin-filled world should not be attractive to us. So I'm not attracted to the sin-filled world. I want out of this place, but I'm going to stay and do my job that the Lord has called me to do until I'm done. Hallelujah. You see, we aren't holding on to this world. Remember Lot's wife? She turned back. They were, leaving, they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah behind. They were leaving Sin City behind. God rescued them out of there. It was a horrid place. There was horrid things happening. Oh, that are actually happening now in our own country. Horrid, ugly, disgusting things happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and God delivered them out of there. And, and they're leaving. They're leaving Sin City. Come on. They're leaving Las Vegas. And, <laughs> and they're leaving. And Lot's wife turns back and turns into a pillar of salt. Because she wanted the world. She wanted Sin City. For whatever reason, she wanted what she wanted. Come on now. That, that is the perfect picture of what we don't want. As a believer, we turn to God and we don't turn back. And, 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 oh, and, and when he appears... When he appears and we, 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 when we're not trying to hold on to earth any longer, right? In fact, we're, we can't wait to let go. <laughs> Hello? When he appears, we cannot wait to let go of it. Oh, I, I, oh boy. I got a feeling there will be some people who are like, wait, 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 wait. I still got things to do here. Hold on, Jesus. I haven't seen Australia yet. Hold on, Jesus. I haven't been to Hawaii yet, Jesus. Well, Rebecca's been there now. So she, she gets it. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I, got, I, got, I got these things I want to do. Jesus, I, I was going to buy a Porsche. I wanted to get a Porsche. That's a new car on Rocket League. See, I had to throw it in. That's for Rocket League. Did you win? Oh man, he didn't win. <laughs> I, have, I have to have a portion in my garage before I leave Jesus. I have to have a portion in my garage and then I can leave Jesus. See how sick that is? No. When Jesus appears, we cannot wait to get out. Yeah. Amen. 
There is nothing holding us here. I mean nothing. Because the, the ones we want to go with are going. I get to go with you guys. And then we are forever there. Yeah, let's sing it. Let's sing it. Then we are forever there with him forever. And we have nothing holding us here because we saw him and we said, we're out. Have you seen those Instagram reels recently where they're, they're putting out a lot of them, the rapture ready people, and, and, and they're showing them dissolve as they're raptured out. They, that's how I want to be. Someone, someone's sitting there talking to me and, and, and I'm like, there's Jesus, bye-bye. See ya. Woo! Boom! <laughs> if it's a worldly person, they'd be like, what just happened? And they're going to find out real soon what happened. Come on. As the tribulation is poured out on this earth and there's a time where the, the blood runs up to the horse's bridle. When tribulation is poured out on this earth like never before, but the church of Jesus Christ, the blood-bought ones, the ones who have loved God, the ones who have served God, are now in eternity having marriage supper of the Lamb with Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Ooh, come on. Clothed in our white robes forever. Clothed in white robes, righteous before God forever. And we're celebrating, and we're partying, and we're dancing, and we're shouting while the earth is in utter turmoil and evil and disgusting works of the evil one. Oh man, there's never a better time to love God than right now. There's never a better time to be ready. There's never a better, a re re ready right now to say, no turning back. I've decided, come on, when I got saved in 19, I knew it when I got it from my knees. This was forever. I am not turning back from you, Lord. I am yours forever. I will not turn my back on you. I will not forsake you. I will be with you. I am yours. Come on, if you had never made that from your heart today, today, make that from your heart, a confession of faith as we sing this song. I'm not turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I will not turn my back on you, Lord. I'm not going to look at this world. I'm not going to love this world. I'm going to love you with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my being. I am yours. Come on, let's sing it. Hallelujah.
never find it. Jesus. Jesus. He's the one. He's the one to follow. He's the one to worship. He's the one to give everything to. There's nothing in this world. There's nothing good in this world. No, everything good is found in Jesus. Hallelujah. We will serve you, Lord. We will honor you, Lord. We will follow you, Lord. We're not turning back to this world. We're not turning back. We're going forward. We're going forward. We're marching like the army of the Lord. We're going forward until we see your face in the clouds. Because we're lovers of God. We love you. We truly, truly love you. And forever we get to dwell with love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just give him some praise out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Creator. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus, my King. Thank you, Jesus, my Lord. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Forever I get to dwell with you. I thank you. You called my name. I thank you. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I thank you. I thank you. I'm in the family forever. I thank you that I get to hear well done. I thank you that I get a crown of life because I'm a lover of God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Praises to our God. Praises to our King forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If today you're here, you're online, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never called upon the Lord. Maybe you've played church, maybe you've played Christianity, maybe you've played religion. But Jesus must be your Lord. You must call upon him. You must be born again. You must come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of his dear son. And the only way to do that is to believe in Jesus and call him Lord from your heart. And then you forsake the world and you follow him and you give your all to him and you love him completely for the rest of your life. If that's you today, you say, I, I, I've never made Jesus my Lord. I, I, I played church. I played religion. Today, I want to make Jesus Lord. I want to be born again. I want to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. I want God to come live in me and dwell in me. And I want to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. If that's you today, pray this after me right now. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I repent of all sin. I repent of all works of darkness. I want in your kingdom, God. And now I know the way in is through Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus, you're my master. Forever I am yours. I give myself completely to you. I believe you're alive. You have risen from the dead. And I call you Lord. Heavenly Father, show me your ways. Teach me your ways, and I will walk in them. I will do them, and I will be an obedient child in your kingdom because I love you, and I will do what you said. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did you get something today? Don't you love that, that old song? I was preparing the message and I just started singing that. And I'm like, Sarah! 
we got the perfect song for Sunday. Hallelujah. Do I got some people who are not going back to the world? I got some lovers of God in here today. Going to serve God. Love God your whole life. That's the only way to go. And that's who we are. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the meeting of the body of Christ. We thank you, Father, that we heard from heaven today. I thank you for words from heaven. I thank you, Father, as we prayed and asked. We got the right words out today. I thank you, Father. We turn back and we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise belongs to our God forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen.